There's none of this. Brandon. Brandon I won't give you advantage to you, obviously, man. How's that? Deal. All right. <laughs> Wait, no, that means you're not reading the PSA. <laughs> So you got you got you got Andy coming through today, right? Andy's coming through for the pod. He's coming in for a meeting. Coming in for a meeting. Word on the streets is uh, someone from Chicago is pulling up. Yes. Gonna try to buy some shit with this guy. Nice. You got high hopes for today? No. Low hopes. So I have a good day. Happiness is expectation minus reality. So you're at that point. You're pulling in. Million ninety five thousand dollars of equity is what you need. You're gonna raise the additional fees. Let's call it. There were some gems. We were dropping dimes <laughs> in here before we got here. Oh, we can't talk about that on camera, Dan. Yeah. yeah, stop. So Andy was thinking maybe we do a show on partnerships and why you partnerships and how you do partnerships and JVs and paperwork and what you look for strategic in yeah what you look for in someone what you don't want in someone yeah he has a management company he's got construction he's got skills that we don't have and we operate in different areas so he would give us exposure to markets that we're not in and we give him exposure to markets that he's not in. yeah man i think we could spend more time in the update since we have andy here and we can just kind of oh, walk through the, the pipeline good idea and then we can go through that and then Bingo, bambo, we're at uh, 25 minutes. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, not think people not heard, state, heard you exactly. But. Number one, it, it's got a tenant. It's the number one Panda Express, Express. Yeah. Oh, in, in that area. You know. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what else? Um, All right, Braden, first and foremost, I heard you was in Phoenix over yeah. the weekend. I love I how you put a special voice on when the camera's on. It's just immediately like <laughs> drop a couple octaves, try to sound cool. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sunday Night Slow Jams with Aaron Sawyer. There's a lot more bass yeah, in my great. interviewer voice. Yeah, so Phoenix was awesome. First of all, thanks to, to Mabry. We, uh, I messaged him last year and I was like, hey, I heard you guys had an awesome suite at Skybox 16. We love tickets. And they were just like, yeah, absolutely. So. Big thanks to Chris Odom and, and Matt Hill over there. If you guys are doing commercial real estate deals in, in Tulsa or Oklahoma or the surrounding area, Mabry Bank is an amazing bank to work with. Super easy. We would lend um, or do more deals with them if we didn't have them maxed out. So give us more money, Mabry. But other than that, they're fantastic. And, and what, the Waste Management Open was freaking sick, right? It was just, it was cold and wet. Other than that, sick. Uh, some dude like jumped out and made a snow angel in the sand and then they cut off alcohol sales from general admission. So that was pretty crazy. We want beer. <laughs> we want beer. I'm wondering what, uh, wonder what other X factors you have in, in your mind of somebody that you're looking to hire. Like, they'll make them an amazing fit at, at Criterion. Yeah, somebody who doesn't know how to say no or doesn't know how to say I don't know. I mean, all stars are people who don't take not knowing something as a barrier to entry, right? Because we've got supercomputers and freaking Google, like my favorite, what, my favorite saying is Google plus effort equals knowledge. So if you don't know something and you don't have the effort to Google it, then you're not, you're not a part of this team. That's just, that's, that's it. You gotta be able to Google plus effort something and get some knowledge, or you've gotta just be able to come in and, and work hard and, and grind it out, you know what I mean? So many people just want to mail it in. Mm -hmm. We're not the job where you can mail it in. We've got 22,000 feet of contiguous space that I think is ripe for a fucking fitness user. I mean, it's... it's. Well, isn't Genesis uh, headquartered in Wichita? I'm surprised they don't. I don't know. Genesis owns most of the real estate. Mm -hmm. um, and it's inline space, so I don't know if we... I mean, I don't know. Um, I'm thinking like Planet Fitness or some one of the discount people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can't get swole, but just by working out, everybody knows it's eating all the time. Yeah. The rest of the PSA is pretty much signed. I love it, love it, love it. Like now is your chance to read the PSA and provide comments, right? There's none of this. Brandon, I won't give you advantage you, obviously, Matt. How's that? Deal. All right. <laughs> Wait, no, that means you're not reading the PSA. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah! Maybe after today, if we feel like anything needs to be, gets added, then we, we clean it up, and then we're, we make it available. Okay. Yeah, I could definitely add five or six things right off the bat. Well, I got a name for marketing person for us, by the way, so. Noise. Test that alone. It's such an interesting skill because it's gotta be like, it's marketing, creative, um, copy, and then any real estate like background whatsoever. Like, mm -hmm. would, help. would I mean, it's almost a requirement. And then just providing color on anything we need to, and then we're done. I think you're gonna have to uh, basically go down the list. Dude, you know you're, it's like, it's like uh, in music whenever they have like a, a rust type beat. Like there's like a Tanner type video now. Like you know you've reached a certain level and there's like, give me the Tanner aesthetic. <laughs> I was like, what do you, I was like, can you send me like who you started watching whenever you first started editing videos? He sent me this dude, but you know, I was like, what do you watch to like get better? He's like, bro, I watch movies now. Like he's watching like John Wick. Yeah. Seeing like how he can like get better. At there's an incredible shot in John Wick 4 that like just blew my mind. Have you seen it? John Wick 4? I haven't seen 4. Oh, dude. There's a, there's a one in there, like, the, it's just an entire singular shot. <laughs> one born yesterday. And, uh, <laughs> um, it's, it's over top of the entire, like, set piece that they made, and it's like, they cut off the ceiling, so you just see, like, the walls and shit, but it's over top of John Wick, and he's going through, like, an entire, like, house, just clearing the entire thing, and just oh, killing just dudes, flames blowing up everywhere, and it, it's, it's incredible. What is up and welcome back to how to invest in commercial real estate and we are pumped for today's show. Yeah, we are. Here we go. There's a there's a hey, little bit of it, something. A little attitude out of Brian, finally. What's y'all's uh, 10 year plan for Criterion? Well, Criterion is still kind of small, right? We don't have a, a huge infra infrastructure. We've got what, five, six employees or something? Yeah. So we still, we've got a lot of growing yet to do. Yeah, I would think, uh, we're trying to set big goals. You know, we wanna, we wanna grow the company, but we wanna do it the right way. So I would say over the next 10 years, there's steps in order to get to our ultimate goal. And I'll, I'll go ahead and, and tell you what the ultimate goal is. I mean, in 10 years, we would like to have a billion dollars under management. Damn! And we have maybe- Which is uh, not unrealistic. We have maybe 115 million under management now. Yeah. And so we had to ask ourselves, that's a big number, but what do we need in order to achieve that number? Uh, what, what kind of infrastructure do we need? And so we've been talking about that. We've been talking about you know, who are the key hires we need to, to make in order to help us get there. Because obviously we've got to buy a lot of property and we have to manage a lot of property in order to get to that number. And so that's really what we've been focusing on is, is trying to, to put together you know, the infrastructure, the right team, and other divisions, like do we want to expand the brokerage side of our business? Do we want to, uh, you know, have a, a loan platform where, you know, not only do does this this company get uh, Criterion loans, but can they do third-party loans? Mm -hmm. Can it be a mortgage broker on its own? All those are things that we're thinking about in order to grow Criterion into the company that we want, yeah, want it to be. It's a matter of finding the right people, right, that fit with us and fit with our business plan. Um, we may find someone who is out there that's really good at debt or something, and, and, and we start on that direction, or someone who's got a lot of experience with, with managing brokers, and we start in that direction. So it's, it's it, a lot of times it's just kind of who we who's out there and who we talk to and contacts that we make. And one other thing I'll say is that we want to continue to grow the investor network. I mean, that's why we're doing the podcast and we do social media. We want to get as many people involved in commercial real estate as we can. And, and so this platform that we're using is, is in order to educate people uh, to, to understand what we're doing and then ultimately want to invest. We want to build a huge following that just loves investing in commercial real estate with us. And, and so that's part of what we're doing on the platform. So, What qualities do you look for in an, an employee whenever you're hiring somebody, like a partner, an employee? And so, um, you know, we might be putting this out there like, I want to ask y'all and give y'all the floor. What qualities do you specifically look for in someone that you're looking to hire? Okay, so if I have to say, what qualities am I looking for? I mean, first, uh, depending on the position, we want the expertise that they bring. You know, I do not uh, know how to do a lot of jobs. And so we want to first and foremost, uh, hire expertise. So we, we skip the learning phase. 
The second thing I would say is I want someone that's competitive. I want someone that, that wants to win. Yeah, that, that is not afraid to work hard and that wants to really get after it and doesn't just want a paycheck but wants to grow something special. And then uh, I don't really know how to put this next one besides we want to hire decent human beings. Uh, you know, I want to hire someone that, that we enjoy being with, that, that we get along with, that doesn't bring attitude and drama to uh, the workplace. And, mm -hmm. and so that, that's kind of two or three of mine. Which is not too hard to, to really do. We, we like to spend some time with people, right? We, uh, you know, we brought Andy on uh, fairly recently, six months ago or so, and, and uh, we knew Andy for a long time, right? Um, so it's not like we're just going to hire someone just, uh, just uh, immediately. We're going to talk to him, and we're going to him or her, and we're going to get a feel for what they're like, right? Yeah, the best the thing we can do is to find people in the industry that we're already working with. Uh, that we think are really good at their job and really fun to be around and then try to entice them to join join our team. Yeah, like so. you said, expertise was the first thing you said. After you work with someone, you, you can get a good feel for, for if they know what they're doing and, and um, the type of person that they are, so. Yeah, and it's so interesting to see how the plans change. You know, when I started, it was single family houses and I was like, okay, how do I get to 10, 15 houses and I can quit my job? And that was like literally the extent of my, my vision. Yeah. And then it was, uh, okay, how do, we, how do we buy multifamily apartments? And, and that was the vision. And now uh, with Criterion, it's, it's, we're really setting that vision out there is how do we get to a billion dollars under, under management? Now, the market could dictate a lot of what, you know, how slow or fast that goes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, we're, we're not afraid of, of not hitting that goal. It just gives you something to strive for. And, be, and by setting that goal, your subconscious gets to go to work uh, and it starts to say, okay, what do I need to put in place in order to get there? So you start asking yourself different questions once you have that goal that's out there. If you set a goal on how we buy $5 million a year in commercial real estate, then my mind doesn't have to work too hard, yeah. right? Uh, that's one That's one multi-tenant shopping center. But if I set that big goal, now I've got to, I've got to force myself to, to do the hard work and to think about what all that entails. What all infrastructure do we need? What type of properties can we buy that much of? Uh, what are interest rates going to be now and, and then two years from now? What's the market going to be like? And so uh, where's the, you know, the equity coming from? All of that comes into play. When you set big goals, you, you work harder to solve the problems. And it's much better to solve a billion dollar problem than it is to solve a five million dollar problem. And so that, that would be the advice I have for people that are setting goals in to grow. I like that. Hey, one, one more thing, Brian, I want you to take the floor on this. Last week, because we were talking about the role of honesty. You're like, I need someone that I can trust, you know, if we're going to bring them on or if we were mm -hmm. talking about partnerships, right? So I just want to give you the floor on what the importance of honesty is whenever it comes well, to partners when I, and, and employees. When I talk about trust, it, it doesn't have to be someone who, well, of course, it does have to be someone who's honest, but, but trust can be trust them to do their job, right? Uh, like Joel was saying, trust them to show up every day, trust them to work hard, um, trust that they know what they're doing and, and that um, they'll, they'll do what they say they do.